Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele. Today is January 19th, 2021, and this is the third weekly video for the month of January, of course, 2021. Now in this video, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Andrews Pitchfork tool. It is a very popular tool. It's available on just about every charting platform. And instead of looking at it in the classic sense, I'd like to show you a little bit something different about it. Hopefully to inspire you to think outside the box just a little bit, maybe give you something to play around with and possibly help your trading out eventually if it's something that you find interesting. So here's the basic idea. This is what the pitchfork classically looks like and the way we'll be drawing it today, it looks very similar to this, but a little bit different, okay? Because normally what we do is we find a higher low pivot to put point number one of the pitchfork on, and then we find another pivot that's the opposite of this. If that's a low, we are looking for a high for the second point of the pitchfork. And then the third point of the pitchfork goes on a low after that. So it's usually a low, high, low, or a high, low, high, right? So the way we're going to be drawing this one is we're going to have point one on an important high or low. And then we're going to have point two on the opposite type pivot. So in other words, if we start out with a low like we do right here, we're going to put point two on a high further down in time. And then point three is going to be equal to both the price level of point one and the time of point two. So let me show you what I mean. Now, right off the bat, this is uh, International Business Machine, which is IBM. It's a daily chart, and this is the 2020 price data here that I've got on the line, or got on the chart in front of us here. So what I want to do, we're going to use this important low back in March of 2020 as the point one placement, and then we're going to put point two up here. And the reason I'm picking this particular high right here is because if we use this first high right there, the pitchfork's going to be entirely too small. So this is the first legitimate high that we could use and have a usable pitchfork. Okay. So after that, I'm going to pull 0.3 so it's at the same price level as 0.1 here, but at the same time as 0.2. So it's going to look like this right here. So this pitchfork right here is slightly abnormal from what most people are used to. But with this right here, we can draw a horizontal line that goes through this right here. So I'm going to draw this right like that. Now, what are we looking for? What's happening is we're looking for that we have our point one, our point two drawn right there. Our point three gets drawn in reference to point one and two. So we don't need any more price data. We don't need a normal point three. So we've got this high here. The market traded down a little bit. At this point, we know we can draw a point three down here because we know that's a high. And then we draw a horizontal line right straight through where the first candle or bar, whichever you're using, hits the median line or the middle line of the pitchfork. And that's going to intersect with one of the outside lines of the pitchfork. And when that happens, we can expect the market to be trading very near that nodal point or that point where the lines cross right there. Now, it doesn't have to move there, obviously, and it can actually technically be here. Price might be here. Price might be up here. And it's entirely possible price might be even with the bottom right here. Okay, so there's really four points that you have a high likelihood of price being around. But if we, let's go ahead and move this so that we, we see right here in this particular example that price came very, very near at this point. It missed it by a little bit, literally by a day, but it was pretty close. So if we move point two up here to this future high and then drag point three over here so it's balanced in both price from point one and time from point two, we would then adjust this line, this horizontal line, right here. 
Now after doing that, we can see that when this line crosses over here, that price is just a couple candles away from moving to this point right there, like that. So considering the fact that this low right here is still lower than this low, we can go ahead and move point two up here to this even higher high right there, balance everything out, and then we can move our line right there like this so that it intersects this median line right where the first uh, candle crosses over it and we see further down here that we actually get see right here we have a little move up like that and this times the beginning of another move up like that it's like a little mirror move because we moved up, we moved down, and then we moved up again. Here we move up, we move down, and up again. Um, I'm not saying specifically that's what's always going to happen, but I'm just pointing that out to you. Now, what's interesting is we're, again, we're close to it. The market is very close to it and takes a while to get to it. We can also adjust this line up through here so that it's even with the last candle that was creeping up this line here. And we see that in time it crosses here and it's even with this particular last candle right there. Now we can continue with this and even though this is a lower high, we can keep that same low right there, right down here because it's lower than these lows. We don't have to keep that one, but we can make sure everything's balanced out there we go and then just move this right here and interestingly enough the point that was previously our target now becomes our median line crossover and we see over here that we're close to excuse me this point in time right here that the price is over here and historically we would expect the market to continue sideways to down to meet with this right here the line somewhere because that's typically what happens with this kind of stuff um, <clears throat> excuse me we can redraw our pitchfork completely use this low right here bring this up like this and we get this much smaller pitchfork balanced like that and we have this first line right here or I'm sorry the first candle that crosses the median line right there is where we would draw our line right here and we see that the price is creeping up and it's touching right there but that's a very small pitchfork so that's not something you would really want to use because in all reality Several of these candles, if not all of them, would already be there so that we can verify that this is a top. So further down the line right here, we have another top, and we can use this. We can draw a pitchfork from there. That's our point two, and then our point three balances point one and point two. And then we would draw the middle line right about here, since these candles are what touch this first, and then all the way over here we get the market touching right up there like that and then just drawing it again like this balancing it out here point three up a little bit and then drawing our middle line is actually touching like right away because this first candle comes down and touches it and then we are right here where the price touches we see that we're way outside the market went way down below the actual pitchfork body right there but if we put a horizontal line right here remember i said that we have any one of these four points we find that right here the market has come up and is a candle away from touching this line down here so while this has predictive nature in it in this particular methodology it's not like um, extremely precise number one and number two you've got four different points where you might be hitting but the point is that we can use this pitchfork tool in a different way that maybe you can play around with and you can find some even better methodologies to use with it because when you're working with the pitchfork tool 
you're dealing with balancing the market and gravity centers and things of that nature and that can be that can help you see the market in different ways so nothing tremendously profound in this video but i really wanted to show this to you again i've shown you something similar to this years before in previous videos but i really wanted to bring it to the forefront again today because it's something that can be very helpful in trading so hopefully you found it useful and helpful and i'll talk to you next week in the next video